All right, everyone, thanks for joining us on today's episode of The Business Hammer brought to you by Yellowfin Digital. Today, I've got Tim Palangi with me uh, from Cary, North Carolina. Tim, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So why don't you start off and uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself and, uh, and what you do? Well, I am a lifelong electrician straight out of high school. Um, did not take the traditional college route um, the degrees. I decided to go right to work out of high school. I went to a vocational high school in Massachusetts where I grew up and uh, became an electrician pretty much right from there. Uh, That's awesome. And then over the course of life, I got tired of making other people's dreams come true and decided that it was time for my dream to come true. And um, got a pretty successful electrical contracting business here in Cary now and always looking to continue to, to grow and expand. That's awesome. So it's interesting that you, you're the first person who said that they went straight from high school straight in. So that's very interesting to me. So I, I did go to college for two years, dropped out, opened a liquor store, much to my parents' horror because neither <laughs> one of them drank. And I didn't either, frankly, I'd never had a drink until I was 21. Um, mm -hmm. But I think college is grossly over-exaggerated in the fact that everybody needs to go to college because they don't, because then they get out and they're, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and yeah. end up making 15, $20 an hour anyway, can't pay back their student loans. So can you talk a little bit about like why you decided to go that route or if somebody like told you, Hey, you should consider doing this or how that, how that came about? Um, I actually think it probably started for me at a, at a young age. Um, I remember my mother used to always yell at me and I would get in trouble for taking things apart. Uh, she would go buy a new toaster. I would sit there <laughs> curious how that toaster worked from where you plugged it in. What happens after that? And I would, I would take that toaster apart and, she'd come home and needless to say there was no toast for a couple of weeks but sure. i would i would put I, I would take it apart and really get into it and then when i had the chance um when i got out of um you know most people call it middle school but where i grew up it was junior high school uh at the end of eighth grade i had an option to go to a traditional high school or go to a, a vocational high school um where two weeks every two weeks you are in your course of trade whichever that is whether it's plumbing electrical carpentry that's awesome culinary retail management hairdressing there there were probably 30 different options welding um you know the, the auto mechanics i could go on and on there are just so many different options and as your freshman year you, you know they put you around to all the different trades you spend a couple of weeks in each one of them so you learn what you what you like and then the next three and a half years of your high school career you're learning that trade so you're coming out of high school ready to go. That's um, incredible. And, yeah. And I grew up in an area where it, there weren't many people going to college. It just, it was, you know, an underprivileged area. And that's how I saw my way out was the sure. trades. It wasn't, it wasn't going to be, you know, getting a degree in whatever it was I would have gotten a degree in. It was going out there and learning and working. Yeah, that's incredible. And I mean, and obviously look where it's got you. I mean, it, you are obviously successful. It looks like you serve six different counties in the North yes. Carolina area. Is that correct? That is correct. So yep. that's huge. I mean, how many, how many people do you have working for you currently? I've got three crews out there right now, plus um, office personnel as well. That's and great. I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to get myself out of the field as much as I am, which, you know, Sure. Today I'm on the field and doing this from a parking lot. So sure. um, I'm, I am trying to get myself out of the field. But, you know, as with everybody, the, the challenge is people. That's the, that's the biggest yeah. challenge with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I spent um, all day yesterday between Yellowfin Digital and Flip Flop Handyman. I spent all day interviewing people the entire day. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. it's well, at least nice. you're, you're getting applicants, which is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's tough getting them now. Yeah, it's tough. I, it was the funniest thing was I had a guy call me out of the blue this morning that, for the handyman business and said, "Hey, are you guys hiring? I can't find a job anywhere." I'm like, <laughs> "That's strange." Because everywhere you that go, is you very see, strange. You see now hiring everywhere you go. So that was, everywhere, yeah. It took me. I didn't know what to say. I was like, "That's weird." But yeah. yeah. So I mean, so assuming you have enough employees and that you can find enough people, mm -hmm. you are then not working out in the field. I assume. 
I would like I would like to spend more time working on the business than rather working in the business. Yeah. And, and that that's that's for me, that's the biggest challenge I have. You know? Sure. Um, it's hard to, you know, do the things that you need to do to grow the business if you're constantly out there every day. Yeah, you're like you're like the perfect perfect podcast guest. I could not have teed this up any better because these are things <laughs> that everybody deals with, right? Like, yeah, everybody, you know the saying. I I'm going to work on my business instead of in my business. Luckily for me, with the businesses I have, I don't really have a particular skill like you. Like I was saying before we got started, like I'm not an electrician. I'm not like I don't do drywall. I you know. I can do handyman stuff, but the reason I started handyman mm -hmm. business, like I told you, is because Yellowfin's really good at getting leads for home services. So I started yeah. it, have a have a really good manager who manages every bit of the day to day, and then I help try to find enough employees. But mm -hmm. I will never go out and work in the business because people want I want people to pay us when we get done, and not have to yeah. pay them, <laughs> and not have to pay them for, for any damage done. Yeah. But but yes, I mean it's it's really weird. I finally got to the point this last year with Yellowfin where I was working on the business and not in the business. And it was life-changing. I mean, oh, sure. just quality of life. I mean, just feels like you just get to relax a little bit, take a breath. And I mean, and obviously it costs quite a bit to hire the people that it caught that it takes to do that for me. But after four and a half years of just the straight hustle every day, day in, day out, you know, I was working 60 plus hours just trying to get this bad boy up and going. Um, and it was, it was kind of a breath of fresh air when it finally happened. And now yeah. sometimes I look around and go, am I, should I be doing something else? But like you said, <laughs> I, I, I'm constantly trying to figure out how I can grow this thing. How can I do more? You know, as a digital agency, it makes sense that we use digital to help grow, but it's more than just, you know, pushing a button and starting, starting some Google ads. Um, yep. for us to be able to, to grow. So it's building the infrastructure, getting the, the human capital that it takes. There's a lot to it. So that said, if you were able to find that person, pull yourself out, what do you think you would be doing to work on the business to help grow it? Like, do you, do you already know that what needs to be done or you have to try to figure it out or where are you in that? Yeah, um, I know exactly what I want to do. Number one, I need the, the people. That's that's the biggest challenge. Sure. But um, I want to expand. That that's what I want to do. I've got a really really good good hold over my market right now. I've got a uh, as far as my the customers I want. Put it that way. Sure. Um, not not total population, but the customers I want. I've got I have more than my market share. I've, sure. I've got I've got that covered. Um, I would like to expand into different areas. Um, okay. Whether it be stay in North Carolina or do I want to you know take this to take this to Florida, take it to South Carolina. Um, you know, my long term I've got long term goals, short term goals, and mid term goals. Okay. Uh, my long my long term goal is to franchise. It, oh wow! Is, is to sell my my structure, my plan, my pricing guides um sales processes that is my ultimate goal is to is to franchise this business to a to a point where other people can succeed um but yeah no and, and that that's where I, to answer your question uh again a long very long-winded answer but to answer your question that's what i would probably focus a lot of my time on um and i'm, I'm also i i can't help myself by getting into every single job that we do and watching every single thing that sure, we do, sure. reading each and every review and, you know, all those things. And I can't stop myself from doing that. I, and I don't see myself stopping doing that, but I would like to have that time to concentrate on growth and expansion. Yeah. Yeah. To be clear, I still have my fingers in every pie. I'm, I'm sure much of my team is like wishing that I would take some fingers out, but, um, mm -hmm. but it's not like, if my finger's not there, it will still move forward is the great thing. Like I can actually take a vacation for the first time. I'm 41. I started being mm -hmm. self-employed when I was 20. So for the first time in 21 years, I really feel like I can just take a vacation. I could turn my phone off and come back and nothing's burned down. And it's, that's yeah. the greatest feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Um, I've it's got a great feeling, I man. Yeah. Uh, I, I took a few days last week. It was, it was fantastic. Good. Uh, went down to Puerto Rico and yeah, everything was all pre-set up for everybody by when I was sure. gone, but everything ran smoothly and it was nice. That's great. Yeah. So, so it looks like, so Carrie's just outside of Raleigh. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. So 
it, are are all the counties that you are in currently kind of around it or do you have like little pockets around it's pretty much um I've, I've got probably about a 60 about a 60 mile radius oh wow from from the center of raleigh is about okay. where I, is about what i cover and that, that stretches out to about yeah about six different counties yeah that's pretty big so yeah. how do you how do you go about getting your leads currently is it word of mouth is it referrals from you know people who've used you before and they're just calling you back is it digital how do you do it it, it's a combination of everything um i would say i don't um where you are i don't know if you've heard of the website next door Mm -hmm. um yeah that is my biggest driver interesting it's it's probably 70 percent of my business i would say comes from next door and i don't spend a dime to be on there it, yeah. there's a lot of companies that you know pay for pages and advertising sure. everything everything that we get it, from next door it's all reviews recommendations sure. and referrals and we probably i would say it's probably six calls a day we get from wow. next door and, and now it, it's it's from all different neighborhoods i have no idea how it is one day i updated yeah. my app and all of a sudden i'm seeing neighborhoods that i've never heard of and i have no idea where they are Sure. As I'm just scrolling through and, you know, we're getting calls from all over the place. And, sure. Um, we've, done, we've done some digital marketing, not a ton, not a lot. I, I to be honest, I really just haven't had to. The phone right. it just ring, it rings organically pretty much yeah. every day. Um, I do have a company that manages like online profiles and stuff like that. My Google, my maps, and Google yeah. maps, all that stuff. And uh, keeps an eye on my Google, my business. But for the most part, I handle all that stuff myself, the web page. Um, it's probably very evident that I built it myself. I am not a uh, web page designer by any stretch sure. of the imagination, but if you go there, it's live, and I'm proud yep. of that. I'll take that. It's up, uh, but yeah, it's up, and you can you can type it in, and it's still there. So that that's a good thing. I've been saying for months I need to update it with more pictures and stuff like that. But yeah, where does the where does the time go? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, where's the time go? Especially but, if you're yeah, out no, actually doing the work, it makes yeah. it tough. Yep. Um, but as far as the marketing spend, it's very little. It's That's very great. little. Um, I don't, it's, if I get to the point where I had to, I'm fine with it. And, and, I, and I would open up the, some marketing, do some Google ads, do all kinds of different things to reach people. But I just haven't had to go down any of those roads. That's incredible. So next door is very interesting to me. It's very location specific about where it's working, where it's not. So for example, I know I have a good friend in Raleigh. Um, he says next door there is just blown up. It's just, it's the thing, right? It's huge, and you, yeah. Yeah. And you can use it and pay or not pay and still get a bunch of leads, you know, assuming people will just talk about you, people will give you the yeah. uh, referrals or the reviews and all that. In yeah. Corpus Christi, I paid for it for flip flop any man because he was telling me, just try it. I promise you, I try it, try it, try it. Not a single phone call. It was like awesome. crickets. So, I mean, obviously we, we use it for, are a lot of our clients in other areas, parts of the country. Um, mm-hmm. But next door is just not big in Corpus Christi yet. And it's, we're just it's not, it's not big in a, yeah, it's not big in a lot of places. I've got a yeah. friend up in Massachusetts that, you know, they have next door for their neighborhood, but they don't use it the way it gets used down yeah. here. They yeah. use it more for like police messaging yep. or that's here. Something like, yeah, but yeah. down here it's, it's more, it's every, it's a I, social I, network is what it is. Yeah, my wife yeah. and I, laugh, we, we sometimes will, you know, we'll pour a glass of wine and sit there and laugh at it because everybody loves to air their dirty laundry on it. Sure. Sometimes I want to comment. So I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Keep your mouth shut <laughs> yeah, exactly. Him. You don't want to alienate anybody. Keep your mouth shut. Yep, That's so. funny. I like yeah. that. Yeah, but no, next door is fantastic for us. And to me, I don't even, if somebody calls me from next door, it's not a lead, it's a job. That, yeah. That's, yeah, that, because that's well, it's already I sold because it. you've got it's the yeah, you've got the reviews and it shows that you do a good job. Same thing from Google My Business, I would assume for you, mm-hmm. because you only have 76 reviews, but it's five star. So yeah. if I land on that, I know that you know what you're doing because you can't get a five star rating off of 76 reviews if you don't. Yep. I mean, that's the long and short of it. So, yep. I mean, and that just speaks to, again, you. I couldn't have teed this up more perfectly for all the stuff that I like to get answers on. Tease up perfectly the importance of reviews, whether it's Facebook, Nextdoor, Google, always asking for the reviews. Right before I got on with you, the guy who runs Flip Flop Handyman was sitting in the office with me and I was beating him over the head about, you know, you got to tell these people we're going to do, send them the, the message for the reviews because 
it just helps when they know it's coming. We send them a text, they can click on it, leave the review directly there, make it super yep. simple for them. And he's just, he's old. I blame it on him being old. I don't, I have mm -hmm. no other reason. I wish he was here. <laughs> I wish he was here. Cause he'd be going, mm -hmm. um, yep. but yeah, I mean, it's, it's so, so, so important to be able to close jobs yeah. easily. Yep. It's something like 85% of people in America trust a Google review, uh, a high Google rating, the same as they would a good friend or a family member doing a referral. Absolutely. Pretty strong. Yeah. And that, yeah. And I, I push for them on, uh, on every job. And, you know, I, I think people are more, and, I, and I'm, I take more pride in this than any, than the amount of reviews that I have. I think people are more apt to write negative reviews than they are to write positive reviews. Yeah. 100%. Uh, they're, they're just more in the fact that I've got five star and I haven't made anyone that mad yet. So um, I'm, I'm more proud of the fact of the, the, the number of the, the number of stars and the, the reviews because it means I haven't really, you know, I, I don't have many people with negative experiences, which is that's great, which is my goal. Yeah, and there's, there's times where I'll, you know, and it happened just before I, I got on the phone with you today. Um, I, I went to a customer's home, you know, turned out to be something they just didn't know where a circuit breaker box was, found it, showed them, reset the breaker, everything was good to go. Um, you know, what do I owe you? They asked. I said, you know what, nothing. Leave me a five star review. Here's the here's the here's yeah. the link to do it. Let's call let's, let's call with that. And you know what? I'll be their electrician for life just for yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Because I didn't take a hundred dollars yep, today. It'll yeah, probably be thousands down the road. Absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, you're absolutely yeah. correct. I love that. I love it. So, what do you wish you would have known about owning a business? Obviously, the electrician side you've known since you were a kid, basically. Mm -hmm. um, what do you wish you would have known about owning and running a business before you actually got into that on your own? See, uh, I, it's tough to answer that question because prior to owning my own business, I was a, um, I was a general manager for a couple of the larger um, electrical contractors out there, the residentials. Okay. Um, I, I ran a Mr. Electric. I've ran a Mr. Sparky. Gotcha. Um, and you're in Texas. I'm sure you've heard of Generator Supercenter. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I ran the, their Raleigh. I started up their Raleigh location here, so I, I've I've learned a lot along my way sure. to make it easier now. But um, you know, I would say if I didn't have that experience, I think the the biggest thing I would probably want to learn is how to be a better people manager, how to um, how to handle different personalities yep. because that's really yep. what it comes down to, you know. But, a service technician has a different personality than an installer and it's it's a whole different it's a whole different thing so sure. for me i i learned i was lucky enough to learn that lesson along the way um about how to learn how to deal with different personalities but somebody coming in just starting a business from scratch without having that experience that's the one thing i would say is you need to learn how to do is manage people and personalities yeah that, that's a very difficult task. Yeah. You know, good maintain night. that chain, of, <laughs> maintain, maintain that chain of command, but still have a good personal relationship with, with the people you work with, but have that respect and understanding of who is in charge, how it works and, and where that chain ends. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm embarrassed to say, I think I was 29 before I finally realized that I just have to manage people differently than I made it would manage myself. Because yeah. for me, I show up, I'm there early. I work really hard. I'm just, I don't need somebody to tell me that I'm doing a good job. I know if I'm doing a good job or not. I just get it done. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, I was, and I was 29 <laughs> before I finally realized like, man, maybe I gotta take a different approach to these people because they're just not responding like I want them to. And then I finally realized like, I mean, some people actually do need you to tell them that they're doing a good job. And then that became a difficult thing for me to remember because again, I don't care if you tell me if I'm doing a good job because mm -hmm. I don't care. So then yeah. for me to actually be conscious about saying, okay, hey, you're doing a great job today. Thanks for all the work you do. That was tough for me for a while. And I mean, now it's you know kind of become second nature, but yeah, yeah just the personalities and trying to make it like what motivates you versus what motivates the guy next to you can be two completely different things. Exactly. And when I learned exactly. that money isn't always a motivator for employees, that blew my mind. Because why am I at work other than to make money? Yeah. So when I when I found out that some people just wanted to take off work two hours early rather than get a hundred and fifty dollar bonus, it literally blew my mind. But yep. 
I mean, that's, you know, different strokes, you know, it takes everybody to get it done. So that's, yeah. that's a definitely important one to, uh, if you haven't learned it yet, go ahead and take our advice. Now, if you're watching it, this, and learn it, it will, it will ruin you if you don't yeah. master it. It will. Yeah. And if you do master it, it just makes your life easy because yeah. you can get the, the most you can possibly get out of everybody. And it just makes it a lot yeah. easier. So, yeah. and, and you get people, you get people that, that, are, that get on board with you and your ideas, your vision and your goals. And, yeah. and to me, you've got to make those people part of your vision, your goals, and your future. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I give the same level of commitment to my employees. I expect from them. And, sure. And I, and I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just be an adult. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah. Some people don't get it yet, but it's pretty simple. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very good advice. Very good advice. Well, I was going to ask you what's your best piece of advice, but that's definitely, that's it right there for sure. Yeah, that's it. Learn, learn how to manage people. Uh, if you're starting an electrical business, hopefully you know how to do electrical. That's number one. Yes. Or you have, or you have put the right people in place to do so. Um, but manage people and, you know, understand that people are, everybody's different. You know, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. What motivates person A does not motivate person B. And you can scratch your head for hours trying to figure out why would this motivate person B. But bottom line is, it doesn't matter. Right. That's their motivation. Yep. That's it doesn't matter what you think. It's what they think no. that actually counts. Yep. What makes them feel valued and important? Is it yep. an extra dollar? Or is it a pat on the back? Or is it a, hey, you know, here's lunch on a Thursday? Or, yep. hey, I brought you guys some breakfast sandwiches. Or, you know what? It's 2 o'clock. Put until 4 today. Whatever whatever those things are that motivate people and keep them engaged and keep them loyal, learn those things, do those things every day, and never forget them. That's awesome. That's my advice. That's that's incredible. Man, that's so good. I'm, I'm going to stop it here. And I really appreciate your time <laughs> today. That you, I've got tons of good information out of you. And if anybody's watching this, they're going to, they will take at least one nugget away from this interview. So. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. Absolutely. Well, it's been a, it's been a pleasure, man. I really enjoyed talking to you and um, anytime you want to have me back on, I'm more than, I'm more than happy to do so. I'll take you up on it, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Cool. Thank you.